Good afternoon and welcome to Northern Caribbean University's music department's organ recital featuring Dr. David McCullough. Let us stand for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the wonderful gift of music. We thank you for allowing for us to be here this afternoon. As this program proceeds, I ask that hearts will be lifted closer to you and that as Dr. McCullough shares his gift of music, that we will be drawn closer to you and that uh, people will be blessed. Continue to lead us, continue to direct us. In your name I pray and say thanks. Amen. You may be seated.
say that this is the most famous uh, organ piece in the world. I've done 25% of it. I'm going to do the rest, but I'm trying to rest my brain. Just kidding. But uh, this is a piece that I used to play for a grade. So I don't want you to grade me today because that was a long time ago. <laughs> and I was supposed to play my teacher, Dr. Whitaker. He was very funny. And uh, I play all of it. Well, you're going to hear all of it if my brain gets into, into gear. If I forget something, I'm going to ask my page turner to come and I'll start over the fugue. This is the prelude, and the main part is the fugue. It moves very fast. Um, but Dr. Whitaker would let me play the whole thing, and then he'd sit there and he'd say, well, that was good practice. I missed one note. Like, I thought he would just say, oh, good job, and all that. No, he sat there, and of course, I hated that. He smoked his pipe, and it was hard to concentrate. But uh, it, it was a real opportunity that I was given. The Lord gave it to me, and I was able to take advantage of it. Now, here's the fruit, the fugue. Let's see if I can get through it. If I can't, and I break down, where's my page turner? All right, you got to come rescue me. All right. You know where the piece is? I hope you do. <laughs> All right, here comes a few. Let's see if I remember it.
I think I made it through, but my teacher would have given me an F. I missed a couple of notes here and there. If you know the piece, it's dangerous to play a piece that's so world famous. Everybody knows every single chord and every single note. And it's very humbling when you don't match Virgil Fox's version and Diane Bish's version, on and on. Uh, it's a very difficult thing, but I survived. I didn't get a good grade, but I survived. This uh, program is very difficult for me. Originally, I, <clears throat> I decided to do something. I had promised uh, Dr. Robertson for many years that I'd come, and I told him, I'm too busy, I made excuses, and so on and so forth. Uh, but he was my mentor, not knowing it, in the Kencott Church. I used to listen to him on Sabbath morning. When I was seven and he was about 17, just before he went to Boston for the first degree. And uh, I always wanted to play like him and be able to play the organ. So I asked God for the gift right back in, in the last bench of Kencott Church. Never forgot it. Uh, let me be able to play like that. And God has granted me that gift. Uh, in addition to that, um, I'm here as an ambassador. Uh, I want all of uh, the alumni and everybody here to remember the music school. The teachers here work extremely hard and they're very qualified. And uh, I am mortified when I come and notice one how hard they're working, how difficult their facilities are, how difficult the circumstances are, uh, and they're so qualified and so many of my colleagues in the States are ready to come and raid them and take them. So what I need for everyone listening to do three things for me. One, you can give of your time to the music school. You can right now, um, you know, just tell somebody about it. You have social media, let them know there's an outstanding music school. And wherever you are in the Caribbean, in the States, it's worth a trip to come down and study. Uh, the second thing I need for you, wherever you are, to help uh, recruit students, which is similar to what I'm saying. But speak up highly about the school in general and speak highly of the people here and try to get them to get, give you a commitment. I've been only here about three days and I've gotten commitment from three, stu three students to take music next semester. And I didn't try it. I was just here playing and somebody came by. I take the, took the time to stop what I was doing and converse with them, learn a little bit about them, about five minutes, and that was that. Um, you know, I think the campus faculty and the folk and the alumni, wherever you are, you need to take five minutes or ten minutes and speak with a youngster and find out their future, enjoy them and understand them, but most of all, invite them to join God's army. This is the school of the prophets, and we are having problems with preachers who can sing. Matter of fact, I won't talk about that. We, we usually have preachers that are mic like this. They forget their mic, and the opening song comes, and they're not on pitch. And I'm sitting there trying to play, and I'm really, really distracted, hoping that the angel of the Lord will come and just cut them off and then give them back their voice in term time to preach. But we have too many, in my opinion, ministers who are not musical enough to be in front, and they rely on the praise team. But sometimes you've got to lead song service yourself, Mr. Minister. I have here in your country church or wherever you are, you got to be able to uh, hit that pitch and be able to sing and teach the people how to sing. So that's a challenge. The second thing what I need for you to do also is to right now go to Watchstop, go to Cash App, go to anywhere and even go to UPS and send right now while I'm talking, you have plenty of time, go and send some money. Send some money. I'm going to repeat again send some money. By the time I stopped playing, you should have had a significant amount of money sent to the school in honor or in tribute 
to the music department. All you have to do is market music department. The president has already given me a commitment that he stands strongly behind the music department, so he makes sure the money goes to the music department. I trust him. You need to trust him. Send your money right, right now. You know, I, I sound like one of those evangelical preachers. You have to send your money now. If you don't send your money now, something bad is going to happen to you. But something good will happen to you if you send the money now. Why? Because God has promised that he'll pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. I guarantee you, you invest in these youngsters, you invest in God's work, you'll get back ten times. And I can testify to that. And the last part, <clears throat> I hesitate to go too deeply in because when you're in front of people and you get emotional, that's terrible. But um, two days ago, I decided to make this a memorial to my good friend, colleague, daughter, I mean son of my, uh, my piano teacher and son of the late pastor Herbert Fletcher who was the president of this institution for many years. Matter of fact, when he was president, I remember sitting in your seat over there and um, just enjoying the, the problem. Then, of course, I'm not complaining. Plaster Fletcher, Fletcher said that the females had to sit over here and the women had to sit over there, the men, <laughs> wherever they are, separate gender. And I, my fact, I went to him and I said, this is not right. You need to come into the 21st century. And he just gave me his typical look, you know. But he, he liked me. I could say whatever I wanted and get away with it. So anyway, the, the rest of the program, I'm going to say something because I don't want to get in trouble. At the end of the program, I promise you, though, I decided that I'm going to do a tribute to Herbie. Um, before I forget, but I think I can handle it. Right where I'm standing, <clears throat> uh, I can recall vividly that Herbie was standing here with his sister here. Mrs. Fletcher was playing over there, and I remember the song. It's over 50, 60 years. God is so wonderful. He's so wonderful. All right, and I'm going to play that and then play a few... Uh, second coming song because we have to have the hope that we will see Brother Herbie again. And that's all I'm going to say right now. The next number. The next number is another Bach number, a concerto that he transcribed from Vivaldi, the, the Italian composer of orchestra, mostly strings. But Bach was a brilliant musician. He didn't have a tape recorder, a machine tape recorder, but his brain was a tape recorder. He heard stuff, he would write it down and reproduce it. Fantastic. So listen to this piece. He reproduced what he heard. Um, and this is complicated.
There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, Paige Turner. Uh, the, this next piece is, uh, well, I have a lot to say, but we have to hurry. The, this next piece is also a motivator for me to practice and learn the organ. This is the carillon. Uh, the master, Louis Vierne, uh, it's a long story, but we, in the 19th century, yes, we had some major organ composers. We, the organ came out of the small living rooms. Bach was in church. He was a church musician all his life. Uh, so it came from the church into the secular areas. And then it came to the stage. And they started making these huge, huge organs in France and Germany. And correspondingly, they had some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant organists, virtuosos. Nobody had ever seen their hands and fingers fly so, so much. Well, this particular piece, I heard the great Virgil Fox on the Mike Douglas show in America. Those of you have any idea what I'm talking about. Uh, one afternoon at 4 o'clock, and Virgil was playing that, and he plays everything, like you know, by memory. And the thing is so complicated, something went wrong, and he just stopped in the middle, turned around and smiled, and turned right a bit and started playing again and flawlessly without missing a note. I thought it was so fascinating, but the, the notes and the sound you'll hear, he takes the melody from the big band chimes. Dee, 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 dee. And he keeps doing that for about five, six 
minutes, all kinds of keys and the feet and the hands. And I can tell you something. If you get lost in this thing, you got to start over. So you got to offer a prayer for me this time. All right? Are you ready?
say two of the pieces I heard, not first, but uh, the first CD that Dr. Rob Robertson made, he gave to me. And the Now Thank We All Our God was on it. Um, the piece that I'm going to play here, the toccata from the sweet Gothic, he had on it also. And this is a long time ago. And uh, that's when he was young and I was younger. Thank you. This is just for the benefit of the young musicians out there. Good thing I kind of half memorized the piece because we got lost. 
I don't want to expose him too much, but he turned to the wrong page. I was like, turn back. And he turned back too far. Then he turned again, and I'm like, oops, this is going to be a problem. So, but the Lord saved my brain cells, and I was able to recover. But for those of you who are young musicians out there, you're always going to make mistakes. You're a human person. Uh, computers don't make mistakes, but uh, people do. And that's what makes live performances fun, because the audience gets to see the frailty and the, uh, the imperfectness of the performer. So I want to give a hand to our page turner, Akeem, right? Darius? Najil, okay, give him a hand. Okay. I'm sorry the rain is falling because I'm going to play something very quiet, very sedate, but you may not hear it, so I'm going to skip it. And if the rain backs off a bit, I'll do it. It's very soft kind of piece. Believe it or not, the organ can do anything you want it to do. Uh, it can play softly. It can play loudly. Right now I've been playing loud and fast uh, purposely because a lot of times uh, our youngsters think the organ is just to play chords like you're in a funeral parlor. And the organ can do anything. It depends on the performer and the skill and the study. So hint, hint, hint. Those out there, hint, hint, hint. Sign up over here. We need some organ students. I found two, but one needs 400 bucks to, to, to register on the stand. So out there again, we need the funds. Go to Cash App right now and send some money to NCU, uh, to the music department. We have uh, youngsters who need to come and study, who want to come and study, but they need the support of us outside the university family. So I'm calling on everybody, wherever you are, Caribbean, Europe, uh, the United States. Right now, you only need $400 to sponsor one music student for one little semester. That's not that much. I'm talking about 400 U.S., by the way. U.S. I'm not talking about Jamaican dollars. We, we're not going to go there. Um, U.S., $400. Try to get it to me, or to, not to me, but to the school before the end of the program. Is that a deal? I hope so. That's a deal. All right. So I'm going to skip the quiet one and go to the cold prelude, A Mighty Fortress.
this one. much Ray. I should have played that at the beginning. Um, now I think I'm ready to continue about the tribute. My friend Herbie unfortunately was called uh, away from us. I'm, I'm, uh, I get tangled up with the Baptist uh, or other people who say called away home but he's in the ground still if he went and gets there. The, the issue is that we, our families go back a long way and as I said Mrs. Fletcher his mother was my surrogate mother and my piano teacher for a long time and then she became my pianist when I had a touring choir I think even brought uh, when uh, President Lashie was here we came and I had 36, 37 voices on the stage here and we gave a program and one of the tenors that time was Herbie Fletcher that we're talking about. Herbie and I have, uh, have collaborated throughout the years and as I said I am not connected with NCU and I know the board members are going to get on the president but I don't care. I believe the music building should be called the Fletcher building. We fix it up, we make it really really nice 
and it should be called the Fletcher Building. Why? Because Mrs. Fletcher gave many, many years teaching over there, and uh, of course, Pastor Fletcher was the president. But I think those of you who are connected to the Fletchers, wherever you are, I expect you to send Cash App right now. We start our project to get the music wing refurbished, get the music building rebuilt, whatever, and then we name it the Fletcher Music Complex. You don't have to go with me. I'm all by myself. I didn't ask anybody. So don't blame the president. Don't blame the chair, Dr. Anderson. That's just me. But I want you to support me, my friends in the States. I know you can take up that mantra, pick it up and take the mantle. All those of you in the church choirs that I directed and Mrs. Fletcher played for, uh, all of the, the agape singers who were with me for years, Mrs. Fletcher played for, and all of you ministers out there, Mrs. Fletcher played for your evangelists, the meetings, and on and on and on, and many of you who received piano lessons from Mrs. Fletcher. And she right now, you need to offer prayer for her, keep her in prayer. She is way up, I won't tell you the age, but my mother is 98, and Mrs. Fletcher is not close, uh, far behind. So it, it's a difficult thing to have to say goodbye to your child. My mother had to do that, and she's still not recovering uh, 50 years. So we want to pray and lift up the Fletchers and uh, keep praying for them, call them, and, uh, you know, Althea and all the, the two girls, and keep them in your prayers. Uh, so before I... I pray, uh, play what I was saying was right where I'm standing, Herbie at 12 years old with khaki pants cut up to the knees on a Sabbath morning next to his sister Barbara and his mother playing God is so wonderful, he's so wonderful, I forgot because uh, he saved me and he forgave me, he's so wonderful, all right? I forgot all the words. I had it all together before I stood up to talk. But this is the issue when you're emotionally tied up with something, things interfere. And if you don't know this song, it's one of the old ones that think in the Christ thing song. And uh, by the way, some of the, I'm just going to play one verse. My mother likes me to do that. Just play and improvise and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure I'm that good at it, but some of the stuff I like. Um, so I'm just going to do that, but I'm going to play after that one verse from the hymns that deal with the second coming of Christ and end with the general conference theme, We Have This Hope. And uh, some of the ones that I will play were composed, edited. Matter of fact, I have a workshop on that because most people don't know his name. Mrs. White's nephew, his name was Franklin Belden. And he edited three hymnals of the, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The last one was a Christ in song. And uh, the first hymnal was done by his uncle, James White. James White was the, first, the editor of the first hymn book of, the, of our church. And then the next three were edited by Mrs. White's nephew, her sister's son. And the Lord had blessed him or blessed him so much is that most of these songs he composed in the middle of the service. And you're going to say to me, what are you talking about? Well, Brother Belden would sit in the audience or on the platform. He would listen to the preacher preach. He would get a theme from the words of the preacher. He would write the verses, the words, and he would write the, the tune and play it or have his wife sing it as an appeal song. Now, that is just God-given. Just like Bach, God-given. You cannot explain that to anybody. And he wrote 400 such hymns. In our hymn book now, we have only 15 left. 15 left. Why? Because we want to go to the Internet and take our hymns from there. We go to the Baptist and we take our stuff from there. We go for all these other denominations and we have no idea... We talk about Mrs. White doctrinally. Some of our preachers don't even, I said that Tuesday, I'll say it again. 
Some of our preachers are afraid to say the prophet of the Lord. And I'm used to and I'm okay. You can't bother me about it. I'm happy to say Mrs. White is our prophet, the prophet of the Lord. Now her nephew, the Holy Spirit has blessed him. And he's dead now, but, but he has composed and arranged 400 hymns for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You will never hear in another denomination. You'll never hear them anywhere. But they're not being heard in our churches anymore because we don't know about them or we're ashamed of it. And we think it's old-fashioned. But one of the ones will be, Oh, there will be joy by and by. Cover me with his life. There are a lot of songs that you don't even think about that uh, I'll probably play a few. I will sing of Jesus' love. That's one we sort of sing sometimes. So I'll do three belling hymns and then end with the second coming. All of this is dedicated to Herbie Fletcher, but the greater Fletcher family. And uh, I just want to extend my sadness, condolences from my family. My mother, my brother, my sister, and all of the McCallas to the Fletcher family. And we just want you to be encouraged. Mrs. Fletcher, I hope she's watching, that this life will be over soon. And we look forward to the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I look forward to seeing my father, the late David McCallum, and all the other people, the late L, uh, uh, Lee Herbert Fletcher the second. And now I'm going to look forward to seeing Lee Herbert Fletcher the third because he left us this week.
I think the rain is giving me competition, so I'm going to quit. Uh, again, I'm grateful to the president and to the faculty and all of you for being so uh, considered to, to invite me to come. And my stay has been tremendously enjoyable. I want to also thank Mrs. Curlew. I don't know if she's here, but I want to tell her publicly I appreciate her taking care of me, feeding me, taking care of this, making sure I, I don't go out in the rain. And she's a good mama figure. So she's very faithful in doing her hospitality duties. She's gifted at that. And so uh, I want to thank the entire uh, university population, including the president, for my invitation. The last time I did a program here was 15 years ago, and President Thompson invited me, and uh, Pres uh, Dr. Robertson kept telling me to come back, and I told him no, 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 no. The last time he, uh, I picked him at the airport just before he died, that was his last thing, uh, come and give us a program, and I said to him, I'll think about it. I'll maybe come in the future, but he's not here. So I'm here fulfilling my promise and my promise to my parents who are graduates of this institution. Many of my relatives are graduates here, my father's sister, Mrs. Nemhard, uh, so on and so forth. So I have been tied to this school. The first uh, piano lesson was across the street when I was seven and the first grade that I took down in the valley prep school. So this school is important to me even though it may seem that since I didn't graduate here, uh, but I want to be the cheerleader before I leave. Remember, brethren, you promised me wherever you are, you should by now have gotten to your computer or your phone. And by faith, I know you have sent some funds. I'm not going to ask, but before we close this program, I know there are some funds on the way that have arrived for the benefit, not just the general NCU, but for our music department and for the music faculty that works so, so hard. And we have so many needy uh, youngsters here that need to learn to learn music so they can be a better uh, service to the Lord as they move around. So thank you for the invitation and thank you for being here this afternoon. I'll do Chair one more. of the Department of Music and Fine Arts, Professor Marilyn Jane Anderson, President of Northern Caribbean University, Professor Lincoln Paul Edwards, Interim Dean of the College of Humanities, Behavioral and Social Sciences, Dr. Vincent M. S. Spiedekin, other administrators, members of faculty, staff, and the student body, alumni, other stakeholders, Ladies and gentlemen, it was with delight and gratitude that we were the recipients of this delectable musical feast presented by Dr. David C. McCalla, an experienced organ recitalist whose passion for music as well as for the demonstration of the associated skills started at age nine here in Jamaica. This outstanding musician is from a family of individuals, some of whom are alumni of Northern Caribbean University, who are musically inclined. And Dr. McCalla has chosen to support this university through the Department of Music and Fine Arts by doing performances such as this organ recital and by being a musical contributor to several graduation and Feast of Lights events here at this Seventh-day Adventist institution of higher education, which currently offers degrees in music. In addition to having earned the service playing certificate by examination from the American Guild of Organists, he is a graduate of the University of Miami's Frost School of Music where he earned both his Master of Music degree and his Doctor of Philosophy degree in music. Dr. McCalla is the former student of the late Arden Whitaker, who himself was a student of the renowned Belgian composer, organist, and academic teacher, 
Franciscus Florentinos Peters, also known as Baron Peters and Flor Peters, whose life spanned from July 4, 1903 to July 4, 1986, exactly 83 years, and who was the director of the Conservatorium in Antwerp, Belgium, and organist at Mechelen Cathedral from 1923 until the time of his death in 1986. Dr. David C. McCullough's 60 years of experience includes employment as an organist for the Catholic, Methodist, Episcopalian, and Anglican churches. And he is currently the organist and choir master at the Faith Lutheran Church in North Palm Beach, Florida, while concurrently serving as minister of music and organist at four Seventh-day Adventist churches, with three being in Miami, Florida, and the other being in New York. He has been blessed to be able to do organ recitals in numerous locations across the United States of America, as well as in other countries of the world. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, connoisseurs as well as students of music and friends of Northern Caribbean University, I am delighted and honored to present to you our performer who just presented at this event, Dr. David C. Makala. For your kind words, I'm just going to quickly do my last number. I noticed that uh, I missed it, but one of the reasons I want to do it I opened the program with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all you creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise him Father, Son, Holy Ghost. My gift is because of God condescending to give me the gift of music. So I always start my programs with the doxology. So if you just give me an opportunity to close because that's why I do open and close with the doxology. Then we can have the... Okay. Okay. Yes, everyone. We have been here on this special occasion and certainly this has been such an experience that I don't know, it was you were ca caught heavenwards because the fact is that when Dr. McCullough played the carillon that we so associate with Westminster, I just thought of this um, main auditorium that was built by Dr. Sorensen. And because Dr. Sorensen was from Europe, he made sure that the type of building that was going to be here would have that sort of, um, you know, acoustics that would really, really um, enhance what you hear in terms of music. And the other thing that I should say is that without an instrument, Dr. McCullough would not be able to give us what we heard this afternoon. And I must say here that this organ that you see here was donated to us in 2001. And this was by, uh, donated to us by Dr. Phyllis Lansford. And Dr. Phyllis Lunsford was a great friend of Diane Bish. And she came here to Jamaica under Dr. Thompson at the time and came to Northern Caribbean. And when she saw that we had such a wonderful program in terms of our, um, our education here and what we were doing as a university, she decided that she wanted to make this organ and it's the best one right now, the Allen organ in the, in the island, because the antiphonal speakers that none other <laughs> organ that she has um, dedicated to other churches have right now, because she wanted to have the best in terms of what it could do for the music program. So we, what you heard this afternoon on the skill fingers of Dr. McCullough, 
was as a result of an instrument that could really produce that. So I want you to... And so we want to thank Dr. McCullough for coming and for the dedication that he has towards music, Christian music that is, and also the dedication to Northern Caribbean University. And so as he goes back to America, we're going to wish him everything that's best and we will keep the connection with him because we want some of you music students here at Northern Caribbean University to pursue the study of organ because we really want to have proper organists in this country. So I want to thank you everyone for being here face to face and also virtually and may God bless you all. Thank you.